Turning to health news, the rise in a respiratory virus called RSV, along with flu and COVID in Wisconsin, have health systems for warning of capacity issues at hospitals, emergency rooms, and clinics become overloaded. RSV, which has been on the rise in the last couple of months and afflicts children the hardest, have caused hospitals to increase the number of pediatric beds and intensive care units. Statewide, pediatric beds are 75% full and pediatric intensive of care units are 80% full. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Michael Landrum with Bell and Health joins us from Green Bay. And doctor, thanks very much for being here. Happy to be with you. So what is the situation where you are with all of this? We're about at the state average where we're seeing an increase in the number of cases of RSV uh, in children and as well as uh, respiratory illnesses in adults, but we haven't reached a uh, I would say a critical level in our capacity right now. We've been exploring options for what to do if numbers increase, but we've been able to manage right now with the cases that we've seen. Well, that's good news uh, in that area. According to the State Department of Health Services, this is the first year that three severe respiratory viruses are circulating at the same time with significant increases, they say, in cases. H have you ever seen anything like this kind of triad of uh, viruses? No, I can't remember a time in my career when I've seen anything like this. It just kind of goes along with the last three years with uh, things that I've never seen before are now happening. So I understand that RSV uh, is rather common, uh, but that it's acting differently this year. Like it started earlier in the season. Um, it may be causing more severe infection or infecting a more vulnerable infant population. Is, is, is that right? Yeah, that's all correct. We are definitely seeing more cases than we typically see this time of year. Usually RSV will peak in, I'd say late December, January, maybe in February. And so while we can see cases this time of year in a typical uh, or more normal year, uh, we're seeing a lot more than we typically do this time of year. And that's what's really concerning. We don't know, will things continue to increase and we, will, we won't reach our peak until a couple months from now, or will this peak early and then uh, fade away early? So we are seeing a lot more disease right now than we typically do. What, what about in the infant population? Is, is that being uh, hit particularly hard as we've been reading in some other areas? Well, RSV in general is worse for young children and infants. It's more severe. Uh, those children are more likely to be hospitalized with RSV. So. That is uh, typical for most years that we do see uh, the most severe cases in those young children. Should, should people uh, be tested to determine which virus they're sick with? I'd say it, um, we are testing uh, patients that we see, uh, both children and, and adults, for a number of respiratory viruses. Uh, that's somewhat up to the clinical judgment of the uh, provider who's seeing the patient at the time. Uh, but we do do a wide range of testing. We certainly have much more testing available now than we did uh, even a few years ago. Uh, so, so that is better. Um, most of these infections are for RSV in particular uh, tend to be mild and things that can be managed at home. And so you don't need to rush in and get tested for that reason specifically. However, uh, if your child is uh, uncharacteristically sick, having trouble breathing, uh, particularly young and vulnerable, then that's when you want to call your pediatrician or your family physician and see what they recommend with coming in, getting evaluated, and potentially tested. So between uh, kind of continuing COVID, the flu, and RSV, is the thought that isolation and masking over the past two years left people vulnerable? That is, uh, you know, the, the theory that's being circulated. RSV, uh, influenza, respiratory viruses in general uh, are things that are very common uh, and people get year to year. So uh, over the last few years, as we've been masking and social distancing, we haven't been exposed to these things for a while. And so our immune system uh, in terms of fighting these off and the overall immunity in the population uh, is a little bit lower against these things. So it can lead to more transmission, more cases, and perhaps more severe cases. So what's the prescription for trying to stem the outbreak, especially coming into the holidays? Well, absolutely. So I'm glad you asked that question. Really, 
if uh, if you're eligible to get vaccinated for influenza or to get vaccinated for COVID-19, whether that's your initial immunization or uh, to get a booster, please do so. The vaccines don't uh, prevent any infection from occurring. You can still get an infection, but they definitely make it less severe. This year, uh, the preliminary information from the CDC suggests that the influenza vaccine is a good match for the strains that we're seeing causing a lot of cases, at least right now, early in the flu season. So please, please, please go and get vaccinated. That will help protect you. It protects others around you. Uh, and it helps our health system from getting overloaded with all these respiratory diseases. Good advice. Uh, Dr. Michael Landrum, thanks very much. Thank you.